Thank you for joining the training for our new online system for IRP and IFTA. We have put together a video to help our carriers navigate through the new Motor Carrier Connect system. Once the video is over, we will open the meetings up for questions, or you can ask questions on the chat and one of our agents will respond. So the first page is our login page. You look at the links below, it says apply for motor carrier account. This would be a carrier that has just recently either purchased a truck, um, want and prorate, they, they do not have a current prorate account. So this is one way they can apply online for a new IRP and IFTA account. This link here is if you forget your username. If you click this link, put your email in, it'll send you a new username for your account. The link here is if you forget your password, same thing, put your e email in, submit, and we will email you a new password. You will no longer have to call your ProRate IFTA agent in order to get your passwords reset. And this link here is to request internet access if you don't already have it. 99% um, of our carriers already have access to their online accounts, being IFTA is required to file and pay online. So the first thing that you'll do is you'll go up to username, put your username in and your password. And then you've got the terms and conditions of use page. After reading fully, you'll accept terms of use. Then you have your account dashboard. From this page, you're able to navigate anywhere in our system that you will ever need to go. Up in the left, left hand corner, you have your account number and your carrier name, your account name. It'll also show you if you have an amount due. We will come back to this page once we get some supplements added and there will be a balance in this area. The credit balance will show if you have credit on your account. So if you've mailed in a plate and it's inactive, it'll show up in the credit balance area. You can also refund from this page. And you can view the credit and see what that credit is for. Obviously, there's nothing in there because there's no, no credits available. Here it shows that we have an if to return that is due. So the first thing that you'll see is, oh my gosh, I need to go in and file that return. It's open and it's ready to be filed. I'm going to show you some of our quick links. This just gets you to the account dashboard, this page that we're looking at. The business, address book. This you can edit. So if your business happens to relocate, you'll be able to go in and update your address. The account address book is the same thing. You can edit or you can add if you want to add an address. If maybe you've um, purchased another building and want to add an address. Authorizations. So this page will show you who ha all has online access. So if you have a secretary that has quit and you can't remember whether or not you called the state and had her removed from your account, you can look at the screen and see if she still has online ad an online account. Your contact book, you can add a contact if you hire a new secretary um, or you can edit if one quits and you can take them off your account. Identification. So this page is just going to show you what you have down for your DOT number, your EIN number. Um, you can search the DOT to make sure that it's all showing correctly, and it is. It's SD Training 7. Account finance, account balance summary. This is just one way to go um, and see what supplements you have to pay. There's also a quick link on your account dashboard that I'll show you once we get some supplements added. And payment history. 
So this, you can go back as far as you want. This account is a new count, so we're only going to go back to June 1st, and you can pull up everything that you've paid since this account's been open. Correspondence, this is something new that we don't have in our current system. This is so that we can send you letters um, if we are missing something. It looks like we're missing a vehicle lien release. A title was mailed in, but we did not have the lien release, so we're waiting for you to mail that to us. We're gonna download it. And then it will open. Fleet. Fleet address is the same. You can edit or add. Fleet listing. This is just a quick link that'll take you to your fleet listing. Here you can see all the supplements that have been done. You can open these supplements just like you do in our current system and take a look to see what you were paying. You'll also notice on the left hand side, you will have all of our all of your information from the current system will transport over to this new system. So if you've been in business for 10 years, all 10 years will show up down here. So it'll be 2022, 2021, and you can go in and you can see um, your renewals, all your supplements, you'll be able to pull up all your information. So you will not lose that information. And then fuel tax. This is just a quick link to create or renew a license. It's not renewal time, so it will not let us renew at this time, but once renewals for IFTA do open up, this is one way that you'll be able to renew your license. File a return. So this is a way to get to your returns. And then history. This account is new, so it has no history. It's still just showing that you have these two available. And here are your return forms. IFTA is um, supposed to be filed online, filed and paid online, so you will do it electronically. I'm going to go back to our account dashboard, and we're actually going to file a IFTA return under suggested, suggested actions. Here we're going to start quarter one, so there's two returns that need to be filed. So this carrier had no miles the first quarter. Their truck was broke down or they just don't work the first part of the year. They had no miles. So we're going to click set no operations and that's just a quick way of filing a zero return. Save and calculate. And then we are going to have to acknowledge that it's late because the system will charge you that $50 late fee. and confirm. We're going to go back to our account dashboard, go under suggested actions, and file a return. Now we're going to do quarter two. This quarter, they did have miles, so we're going to go up to the edit, click edit, Total distance. So this is all the miles that all trucks in the fleet traveled in all states. If you have to happen to be one of those carriers that um, are traveling in states that have the tax holiday, you would click yes on non-IFTA exempt distance or fuel. You scroll down, it says non-IFTA distance or fuel. You would put all miles that were traveled in those states that had the tax holiday 
and all gallons of fuel purchased that were purchased in the tax holiday states. And then you would acknowledge, you can put in a comment if you want. Um, this account does not travel in any states that have tax holidays. So I'm gonna go back up, click no, and add my miles and my gallons. Now the system pulls over states that you had miles in in previous quarters. Um, so the states are already on here, but if you wanted to add, say, Alabama, you would just click add and it's there. If you wanted to add California, click add and it's there. Very similar to our old Explorer system. So this state had miles in South Dakota and purchased fuel in South Dakota. They also had Colorado miles and purchased fuel in Colorado. They had Minnesota miles, but did not purchase fuel. They had North Dakota miles, did not purchase fuel, and Nebraska miles, and they purchased fuel. So this system also has a shelf option. So if for whatever reason you get pulled away from your computer and you're needing to go back to your IFTA quarterly, you can shelve it for later. Um, we are going to save and continue. Again, you have to acknowledge that the return postmark date is late and the system is going to charge you that $50. And you're going to file and confirm. You can go back out to your account dashboard and you can automatically see that you are owing $89.65 for your IFTA quarterlies. Well, you know it's your IFTA quarterlies because that's all you've done. So we're going to view the history and see and that'll give you all the history of your payments. All right, so if you want to view a return, you can hit view a return right there on your home page. You can click on either one of these that you want. If you need to amend it, you can get to it that way also. You can also get to amend a return right there. It'll take you right back. It'll actually take you to the start amendment. If you needed to order additional decals, you would click on the 2022 year. And we're gonna order two more sets of decals. And we're going to continue. We're going to go back to our account dashboard and it's going to show up there in our amount due. And you can easily make the payments just by clicking on make a payment. And they'll show down here. Looks like you owe $89.65 in IFTA returns. And then your IFTA decals were $5. We're gonna go back to our account dashboard. And then we're going to work on IRP. Under suggest suggested actions. You can also get to um, your fleet by going to the fleet over in the quick links. but we are going to start a supplement.
So the first unit that I'm putting in um, is wanting to be at a higher weight. It looks like they've got trucks at 80,000 and they have a semi trailer. So we're going to add a weight group. So truck tractor and we want to add it at 98,000. We're going to save the weight group. We can go over to add a unit. And then we will type in our VIN number. So this is the 2007 International. You want to make sure that all the information is correct. The model, the unladen weight on this unit is 17.5. It's got three axles. Quebec axles will automatically fill in for you. And then the color. This truck happens to be a maroon colored truck. The unit number, I'm going to make 8550. And it pulls a trailer. It's not a straight truck. It was purchased as used. The purchase date was the 3rd of August. We paid 25,000 for this truck. You have to click default factory price. And then if you happen to trade in a truck on this, you will definitely want to put the trade in that they gave you on this site because it will change your excise tax. So you definitely want to make sure that you get all your information in there. So we traded a truck for 10,000. The application date is always today's date. The owner information. So it's got to be exactly how you want it titled. So make sure that your title work shows this. This is how it's signed. The bill of sale is signed that way. And it's change of ownership because we purchased it from somebody. And the title that you have in your hands, it came from Kansas, so it's a Kansas title. So you would put Kansas in there. And it is not a lease agreement. If it was a lease agreement, then you would put your lessor and lessee's name in and your lease start date to the end date. If you don't have a start date, end date, you can leave that blank. I'm gonna move this back up. This was not a lease agreement, so I'm gonna put no. You can validate your DOT number to make sure that you have all the correct information in there. It says it's gonna issue a plate but no back plate because we marked that it does pull a trailer. If your trucks pull trailers, they do not have back plates, only straight trucks. So if you have a dump truck, you would have to click issue a portioned plate. That'll get you a back plate for your straight truck. This one pulls a trailer, so it does not need a black back plate. We do have a lien at the bank, so I'll click lien fee. I'll click title fee because you're going to mail that title into us and I'm going to get it put in your name and it's going to become a South Dakota title and you're going to click excise tax. We're going to save the unit. And then you scroll down. And you validate and calculate fees. There is a unit sitting out there that's inactive um, and it's asking if we want to exchange it. We do not because I'm going to show you that um, here soon. And then we're going to file our application and continue. Here is the required materials. If you click on that, we now have an upload. So it's asking you to upload the title, the South Dakota Title app, and the bill of sale. So you would click upload.
and that would upload it. All right, so the first one has a fee amount of $821.38. So you can pull up a billing statement that will shows you it shows you um, what was charged for like excise tax in foreign jurisdictions. The unit billing statement, if you have more than one unit that is on this billing, it'll break it down by unit. If you get out of the system before it's done, you can always go back to the supplement by clicking here. All right, we are going to start another supplement. So for this supplement, we are wanting to edit our weight groups. They have their trucks at 80,000 pounds, but they had a phone call that they are needing um, a higher weight in Nebraska. Let me see, where's Nebraska? Um, in Oklahoma. They want to go to 85.5. Keep in mind, if you increase your weight in a different state, South Dakota also has to be increased. Your base state has to be the same weight or has to be at the highest weight of the group. So we're gonna save it. And then we are going to move units to this group. So if you had other units um, that were later add, added on at 80,000, you could move those units to this group. Oh, and I, well, this one I can move to that group. We'll do move units. Change is not allowed because it's inactive. That's why it didn't transfer over. So we're going to go back down to our account dashboard. Like I said, you can always get back into your supplement. And you're going to validate and calculate fees. So if you do it this way, all of the units that are in that 80,000 pound weight group and you change to 85.5 is going to be at 85.5 for those two states, for South Dakota and Kansas. And we are going to file. All other states would have stayed at 80,000 and continue. We're going to go back up to our account dashboard and you can see that the amount due is just growing. You can also see that we are needing required materials. So we'll click on that. Yep, app seven, we need the title, the South Dakota title app and the bill of sale. You'll have um, them all uploaded, but if you would mail them into the state, then we will be able to um, clear them and then you'll be able to make the payment. I'm going to go back down to the account dashboard and show you how you can pull the temps on them. Oops, I don't want to go to that. I want to go to, well, we'll go to the last one we just did. Here's your invoice for it, and here's the receive credentials. So here's your permanent cab card, and then your temporary. We're going to go to account dashboard. And we're going to start a supplement. Scroll down. So if it's a larger account, um, we have plenty of accounts that have page after page after page of units and you have to flip through those pages in the old system. This system has a cool little filter records. So you could filter, say I'm looking for unit 8550. It brings it right up for you. So if 
that, you know, if there was a hundred units on this account, you wouldn't have to flip through the pages anymore. It'll bring that unit, you click on the VIN and you can make your change. Um, we are going to actually show you how to exchange units. So I'm going to hit the exchange. This unit here is inactive. You have mailed in the plate to the state. This plate is now at the state and we inactivated it. You would click on that and then you would add your new purchase that you're wanting to transfer fees to. All right, it's a 2007 International. The unladen weight is 1700. Remember to fill in all this information. It won't let you go unless you have it filled in. So it won't let you file it. This truck is black. The unit number is going to be 5650. It does not pull a trailer. So this is a straight truck. This truck is just, it does not pull a trailer. So you, you will get a back plate for this one now. It's purchased as used. The purchase date was the third. The purchase price was $20,000. You have to hit default factory price. And the application date is always today's date the owner name, and it is change of ownership because you are mailing me the title work. And it is also a Kansas title that you have in your hands right now. So it came from Kansas and you're mailing it to the state because you want it on your prorate account and we are going to make it a South Dakota title. You can validate the DOT if you want to every time, you definitely do not have to. Issue a plate. We do want a back plate, so we're going to issue an apportioned plate. That will get you a back plate. It has a lien with the bank, so we're going to charge that. We are going to charge titling fees and excise tax. We're going to save the unit.